Hello and welcome to another Sparkle 5 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at the parallax effect. And there are different ways you can achieve this um, and I'll cover some of those in this tutorial. So here I've got a page open in Safari. I have a simple header followed by a picture. And as I scroll that picture stays where it is. And a bar comes up with another picture and some text followed by a background picture which is moving slower than the foreground pictures followed by another static shot and as we scroll up we get another bar with a few pictures on it and then followed by another shot which seems to be coming towards us as we scroll up the page and as we scroll down it leaves us again so there's a few effects in here which we can have a look at. Let's hop over to Sparkle and take a look. Okay, so here we are in Sparkle and I've left everything on the page this time. We're not going to build it simply because it's a series of white boxes, a bit of text and a couple of images. But I'm going to tell you how we place it on the page and what we do with them as we go down. On the left here in the layers palette, you can see I've labeled everything so we can tell what it is. So right at the top, I have a group called the header and it's made up of a text block and a box. Of course, it's a wide box and that's all there is to that. I haven't asked it to stick to the top of the screen. It's just a header that scrolls. Next, I've put in a wide box and this is the color sunset. And you can see on the right hand side, it's a wide box, it has an image, it's stretched to fill. This is the crucial bit. This is the fixed in window, which I have checked on. That means the picture will stay still on the screen and anything that's not fixed will scroll above it. I've also put a little shadow on there just to separate it out from the image. So here is the sunset box, as I've said, it's got a shadow, it's fixed in the window. In terms of its size, Parallax works differently with different sized browsers. So the larger the screen, the more area the picture has to show. And so you need to just bear in mind that it won't look the same on every screen that you're looking at. If you've got a 27 inch screen, your fixed in window, if you want it to cover the whole screen, needs to be at least the, the depth of that screen. But it's trial and error with this stuff. You just have to keep uh, previewing everything as you go along. So here I've got uh, 1,035 pixels depth. And you can see if I preview that, as you can see, it covers the whole screen until I start scrolling there. On a larger screen, it may not cover it. So the choice is yours with how you, with how you deal with that. Okay, back in Sparkle. So that's that wide box. Now it's followed by another wide box, which I now have as a group here called bar one. That's the bar going across the screen. And inside that bar, we have a text block and we have an image. The box itself has got a graduation. Let's just go back to style. It's got a graduation. Uh, it's also got a shadow just to separate it out from the, all the other boxes a little bit. But other than that, there's nothing going on. There's no fixed in window, nothing at all. But it does, it just clips on to the bottom of the box above it. As we move down the page, we have another wide box. And this one is called Blurred Horses. It's in the background. I've actually put a slight blur on it just to separate it out from the front two images. And also a shadow, again, to separate it out from the box above and underneath it. Now, on this one, if we just preview this, you can see as I scroll down slowly, there's the first bar that we were talking about with the text and the image. Now, as I scroll here, you can see that the background image is scrolling much slower than the rest of the page. And that's easily done if we pop back into Sparkle. So I've got the blurred horses image selected and I've got a vertical motion here. Let's click on that and just see what the settings are. 
Now I want the scrolling to begin right at the start at 0% and finish at 100% so it never finishes scrolling as I'm scrolling. I've set the speed to half the normal scroll speed, 0.5. So that means as I scroll, that picture image will scroll at a lesser speed or half the speed of everything else that's scrolling above it. And that gives us that parallax effect. If we just go back to that, that parallax effect where one thing is moving quicker than another. It's a really nice effect. These two are just standard images. They're scrolling at the normal speed. There's nothing going on with those images other than their images. Again, this um, blurred horses image just clips on to the bar above it. We go down and we have a, another image. Click on that. This is called the black and white sunset image. Now again, this is a fixed in window image, so it won't move and it has a shadow. Um, and as we can see in the preview, as I scroll up, that image will appear still on the screen. So that's just another parallax effect. You can see everything else is moving, but this is fixed in the window. And again, it just bolts on to the bottom of the image previously. Uh, it's stretch, fill, fixed in window, and there's a shadow on it as well. As we scroll up, we have another bar. I'm calling these bars because they're just bars that go across the screen with images in them. And again, it's a group. I have some images and they're, they're all scrolling at the standard speeds. I have set nothing with those apart from a shadow and a graduation on the bar. I've got borders on the image. So nothing happening there. And again, it clips onto the image above it. And this last image, again, this is called the girl on horse image. It clips onto the bar above it. And this time, if we have a look at this in the preview, we can see as the, as the bar comes up, here comes the girl on the horse. And she's actually moving towards us as we scroll. And if we scroll down, she gets a bit smaller. Now that's nothing to do with a uh, fixed in window or anything like that. That's just a scale as we scroll. So again, if we click on the scale icon, we can set this to naught and 100%. So the scaling starts immediately, the picture starts showing. And I've just said scale it to 1.2 times. So it's a small scale, but clearly visible when you scroll. And it has that parallax effect if we go back to it quickly. It has that parallax effect as you scroll. And that's it. That's parallax. It's really simple. You need images that work and that look good, uh, you know, appearing from behind something else. It needs to be visually stimulating, but very easy to put together. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.